everybody. Welcome to my Shalom Zone. My name is Sherry Dawn, and it is my great honor and privilege to get to share this Grace Encounter with you today. Join the Grace Revolution and subscribe to my channel. Hit like and share to spread the good news that has the power to change lives. Decree with me, my God daily loads me with benefits as he sings over me. Enter, King of Glory, strong and mighty in battle. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Whew, and everybody that agrees with the truth of the covenant say amen. <laughs> All right, I want to talk to you today out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 52 been talking for the last several sessions about um, the Lord quickening us and awakening us uh, more deeply to the value of singing, uh, entering His presence with singing, singing the note of the Hebrew letter, hey, I think in one of the previous broadcasts I called it a word, it's actually letter uh, that stands for grace, it's pictured by an open window. And uh, you're releasing your breath in order to say that. And since we've been made one breath with the Lord, we're releasing His breath as we're saying that and singing that. And I've just been sharing some things that He's revealed about that and about the songs and the night and all sorts of different things. But He has uh, added another layer <laughs> that I had not considered. So I want to share that with you today. Isaiah 52, verses 7 through 10 the scripture says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Mm. And man, there's so many different directions you can go with that, and every one of them be good. But we're just going to try to stick to the basics today. There are a couple of different Hebrew words that are used here that are, are both translated as good, but it's different words. And so I'm a firm believer that nothing is by accident in the Scripture. And so when God sees fit to inspire the people that are doing the writing, to use a couple of different words, he has a reason for it. He's wanting to emphasize something or add a layer that might not have been considered otherwise. So how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. That first good is from the Hebrew word basar, and it means to be fresh, to be cheerful, to tell good tidings. Now, if you've ever had anybody come into your presence that's just bursting at the seams with some sort of good news, even before they say anything at all, you can tell something's up because their eyes are sparkling. A lot of times they're just kind of jigging around and dancing and can't be still and they're just all twitchy because <laughs> they're just so eager to share this good news. It affects their countenance. It affects their the lilt in their voice. It just affects everything. So good has to, means to be fresh and cheerful to tell good tidings that publisheth peace publisheth is from the Hebrew word shama and it means to declare and publish report proclaim but it also means to discern and to give ears so they use the same word to emphasize hearing with the intention of obeying discerning things but also declaring publishing reporting proclaiming it passing it along that publisheth peace. And again, it's that wonderful, wonderful Hebrew word, shalom. And it means health, favor, prosperity, peace, safety, to be holy well. In other words, nothing missing, nothing broken. So let's put that in there and listen to what this is saying. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth cheerful tidings. Man, that just going to mess up a lot of preachers right there. <laughs> Cheerful tidings. 
that publishes peace, that declares and proclaims the things that have to do with shalom, that publishes health, that tells you it's God's will for you to be healed, that publishes favor, that tells you that you've been accepted in the beloved and you live in the favor of God now, that publishes prosperity, that God is not pleased or desirous of you being so broke you can't be a help to anybody. Peace, safety, to be holy well, publishes these kinds of things that bringeth good tidings of good. And that second good is from the Hebrew word tob, and it means to be good, bountiful, cheerful, favor, loving, pleasant, joyful. Mm. Now, we have to understand that because of what happened with Satan and Adam and Eve in the garden, everything got wrecked and it got out of alignment. But now it's time for us to be publishing peace because the God of peace and the Prince of Peace have joined forces to restore what the enemy has destroyed. And what started at the garden has been building over time. And now we're ready for some grace and shalom explosions. Good tidings would be to tell people that they're no longer locked under the curse of the law. They're no longer chained by the dominion of darkness. They're no longer orphans destined for hell and living without hope. Their loving creator has forgiven their sin and has extended favor, and he's invited them to enter into his joy to learn wisdom's ways, which the scripture says are pleasant. So this is what we're supposed to be sharing with people. Good news, gospel. It has the power to break hopelessness and despair and discouragement off the minds of people. Thy watchman, excuse me, that publishes salvation, salvation from the Hebrew word Yeshua, which we know is the name for Jesus, and it means deliverance, victory, and again, prosperity, health, safety, aid, salvation. And then that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. So this is a new battle cry that he says that we're going to be saying. See, the reason that this verse is important is because Paul quotes this in the book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 15, when he's talking about how shall they believe except they hear, and how can they hear except somebody preach, and how can they preach except they be sent. And then he quotes this verse, how beautiful upon the mountains. So we know that this is kicked into gear in the new covenant. So this gives us a time frame, an element that we can consider these things and realize this is talking to our generation. Okay? So we are to say, thy God reigneth. Now that's from the Hebrew word malak, and it means to ascend the throne, to set up, to rule, and to reign. Now, he's been working behind the scenes, so to speak, uh, through his people, little here, little there, down through the generations. But now he's coming out into the open to overthrow the dominions and the principalities and the powers. And one of the things that gives us a clue that now is that season is this very next verse, verse 8. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Now, watchman is from the Hebrew word safa, and it means to lean forward, that is to peer into the distance. If you were standing on a watchtower and you didn't have binoculars, but you're, you know, you're checking out the distance, that's what it means, to observe, to await, and to keep watch. And before you disqualify yourself from being a watchman and think, well, I'm not anointed to be a watchman, Jesus said in Mark 13, 37, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. And Ephesians chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, he told us to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So none of us get to disqualify ourselves from being watchmen. Now we can choose not to do it, but God has called us watchmen, okay? So we see from this verse that something has shifted because the watchmen are being inspired to sing. Now, I've shared with you on the past several sessions that I've recorded regarding the things that the Lord had inspired me to be singing in the Spirit, to sing the letter, hey, 
uh, signifying an open heaven and the vibrations being released as I sing that and it just tearing up the enemy's plans. But what I have not shared is that several times in the last couple of weeks before I had a chance to tell other people that this was what was going on with me, they're just out of the blue telling me, you know what, I've just been singing. I, just singing. I catch myself singing in the car, singing in the shower, singing at night. And they don't have lay claims to being great singers with great voices. They're just all of a sudden, they're being quickened to sing. And then when I share what the Lord has ministered to me, their eyes brighten up and they realize, oh, this is a Holy Spirit thing. God is doing something here. Yeah, buddy, he sure is. <laughs> okay. Sing is from that Hebrew word, ronin, and it means to creak. And I love that. <laughs> or emit a stridulous sound. To rejoice, to cry aloud, to sing aloud for joy. So again, I say, it does not matter if you cannot carry a tune. It does not matter if your voice sounds like a nail being scraped across a rusty bucket. If the Lord inspires you to sing, sing. And if you're in battle and it doesn't seem to be turning loose like it needs to, open your mouth and sing because God chose praise to stop the enemy. I don't understand why it works that way. I'm getting a little understanding. He's showing it to me. But he's the one that ordained this. He understands what works in that invisible realm that we cannot see. And if we're going to navigate it successfully and successfully come through this end time generation, we're going to trust him enough to do what he says do. So I find this very, very encouraging that all of a sudden the watchmen are lifting up their voice and with the voice together they sing. So that signifies to me that there is a unity being birthed out of this singing that isn't birthed any other way. There's a coming together in the body of Christ where all focus is on Jesus and on what he has done and what he is doing and it's producing a unity that cannot be achieved any other way. So that was verse 8. Verse 9 says, Break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. So this is the response to what the Lord has done. Sing. Break forth into joy. Sing. Because the Lord has comforted his people. Well, when did he send the comforter? Day of Pentecost. When did he redeem? At the cross. So this is talking to a generation after the cross. He has redeemed them. And in verse 10 says, The Lord has made bare His holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. You read over in Isaiah 53, you find out when it's talking about the arm of the Lord, it's prophesying about Jesus. When He allowed His Son to come and to be crucified, to be made sin with our sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. That's what He was doing. He was exposing everything He had and showing us His heart to rescue us to love us, to restore us. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. So he did that so he could do this. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Mm. So he did the first so he could do more because he's all about salvation. He is determined that all the ends of the earth are going to get a revelation of Jesus and those who will receive it are going to be experiencing deliverance and victory and prosperity and health and salvation like they've never seen or understood before when they do. And the clue that this has shifted and that this is beginning to take place is the fact that the watchmen sing. Oh my, 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 that's good news. Psalm 47, the scripture says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He's a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Now see, we read that and we never connect the dots that the nations being subdued is connected to the fact that God's people are singing. Mm -mm -mm. See, he said so much when he said that in the book of Amos that he would raise up again the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David had praise and singing and worship going on 24-7. 
Oh, that's what the Lord's restoring on a spiritual level in the body of Christ. We're not going to a physical tabernacle. Uh, people are gathering all over the place, assembling to sing and to worship, and then they're doing it individually all the time. This being, it's escalating, it's building, it's crescendoing. He shall subdue the people under us and the nation under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God is gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Now, gone is from the Hebrew word Allah, and it means to ascend, to arise, or to get up, or to go up. Now, didn't we just hear something a little bit earlier about ascending and arising? Yeah, so here we go. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with a sound of a trumpet. Shout is from teruah, and it means a clamor, that is an acclamation of joy or a battle cry. So the same sound can be used either as a shout of joy or as a battle cry or both. It means rejoicing, a shout, and it means jubilee. Well, Jesus is our jubilee. He redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. He is our freedom. He's our victory. And that truth, the revelation of what he did at the cross, is, is taking root in the hearts of his people, and it's sprouting and beginning to produce fruit. And they're refusing to back off or to back down from the revelation of that and give the devil the satisfaction of rolling over and playing dead and letting him do what he wants. Not anymore. They're going to continue to sing, and they're going to rattle everything that he's tried to build loose so that it falls and hits the dirt and gets ground to powder and blown away by the winds of the Spirit. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. So we hear, we start this out with singing. We see that the nations are subdued, and then he tells us to sing again. But God is gone up. He arises. He's, he's becoming active for lack of a better word. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. So this is the response to him arising, getting up, ascending. Sing praises with understanding. Understanding what? Well, one, he's worthy. He's worthy of all praise, all glory, and all honor. He is our redeemer. He's our savior. He's worthy to be praised. Number two, he chose praise to stop the enemy. And again, the scripture for that is Psalm chapter 8 and verse 2 and Matthew 21, verse 16. And also, as we've been talking about in the last several sessions, God sings while he works. Zephaniah 3, 17. He is in the midst of us. He is mighty to save. But when he's working that salvation... The scripture says he rejoices over us with joy, he rests in his love, and he joys over us with singing. So God sings while he's working that salvation. So sing praises with understanding. It's not going to be every time you're feeling all giddy with joy. But he's still worthy of praise, and he still chose praise to stop the enemy. And singing, there's something powerful about singing that affects the spirit realm that just talking does not affect. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Mm. As we sing, whether we're singing songs, singing the decrees, singing Bible verses, or singing the letter hey, he reigns. He exercises that dominion over the heathen. He invades enemy territory with his light and his love in order to work more salvation, in order to win nations. So we see again another picture that the dormant strength and power becomes active as God's people sing. He rises up. He, he, he just activates. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Shields is from the Hebrew word meganon. It means shield or protector or the defense. The protectors of the earth belong to the Lord. The defense of the Lord, the earth, it's his. And he delights in doing it. But the princess is from the Hebrew word nadeb, and it means the voluntary, generous the prince, the willing, hearted. That reminds me of Psalm 110 and verse 3 that says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Mm -mm -mm. So he's activated as they begin to sing. And he's showing us the watchmen are beginning to do just that. Well, what can we look forward to as a result of that? Revelation chapter 11, 
verses 15 through 17 uh, says, The seventh angel sounded. There were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Now that you should just fry my circuits. <laughs> Because I would read that and I would think, God, you, why would you be taken to your power and reign? And you, you're our power. You created this whole universe just by speaking words. What does this mean, taking your power and reigning? And I, I would kind of see into it a little bit, but it would never just be really, really clear until I began to get the understanding of what he ministered in Psalm 118 and verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my soul, and is become my salvation. That strength, that dormant power, might, becomes, becomes activated, brings to pass my salvation, Yeshua, the deliverance, the safety, the aid, the prosperity, whatever's needed. And the song is the bridge that connects the two, the difference between the two. So that dormant power becomes active as God's people begin to get in agreement with him in the salvation being worked as they sing. Mm. Thou hast taken to thee thy great power. That's from the Greek word dunamis, and it means the miracle working power, the might, the force, the strength, the ability, the abundance. See, his people are willing in the day of his power. That word willing in the Hebrew, it means spontaneous. And that's what's happening. We're seeing people just spontaneously break forth into song. They haven't been noted for singing. You know, all of a sudden, the watchmen are singing. And then they start meeting up and talking to one another, and they realize, hey, yeah, there's something going on. Her Holy Spirit's doing something. Mm. Reigned is from the Greek word basilio, and it means to rule or to reign. So he's gone from dormant power to active power. What happened to trigger that? Well, I'm persuaded that the preachers finally began to start publishing good tidings. And the watchmen finally begin to sing. And the saints begin to be joyful in glory and to sing aloud upon their beds, like it says in Psalm 149. He put new songs in our mouths because the song, the rejoicing, is the bridge between the dormant power and the active power that is manifest as salvation. Whew. And I just, I have a really hard time not just going ballistic over that. <laughs> trying to control myself don't want to be scaring people on youtube but i'm telling you what i am excited about this psalm 93 one of the things that he told us in isaiah 52 to be declaring is unto zion is thy god reigneth and it's a battle cry we're not backing down we're not giving up we are not playing into the distractions or the dismay or the discouragement because our god is not dead he's not asleep he reigns, and now he's going from dormant to active. He's taking to himself his great power, and he's moving things and causing things to happen in this earth. So if you need some help with scriptures that you can stand on to declare, Thy God reigneth, I'm going to give you a few, and then I'm going to hush. Psalm 93, verse 1, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. Yes, we want to be declaring that the Lord reigns. Psalm 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Here we go with the singing again. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Speak it out. Tell about it. Talk about it. Sing about his salvation, his rescue, the safety, the deliverance, everything that he's made available to us in this new covenant of grace and peace because of the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Sing about it. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all the gods. And so here we go in the same context of the singing and declaring his glory and his salvation. We're dealing with those unclean spirits, 
the fallen angels, the demons that have set themselves up as gods with little g's. He's to be praised above and feared above all the gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Not one of those demons can say that. And that's the reason that the writers of the scripture just every once in a while would speak out. He is the God creator of heaven and earth, the creator God. That's who we serve. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Well, how am I going to do that? Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The earth or the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord for he cometh. He cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with truth. And so many times people read that judge and they think the great white throne judgment and they think hell, fire, and brimstone. And they never think about the fact that because the people have been making intercession, because they've been crying out for the salvation of the nations, that's what he's showing up to do. And he's going to do it with singing glory to God. Psalm 97. The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let me say that again. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. He's taking to himself his great power and reigning, and the people that are in agreement with him are going to rejoice. The people that hate him, not so much. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about can you just see the fire of God arcing out from around that throne and these principalities and dominions and these little slimy demons that are flitting around everywhere just frying their nasty hides? Ooh! His lightnings enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Amen. Yes, they will. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Now, those false gods, those demons, they're not going to worship him with an attitude of worship and praise like we do. But by grannies, they are going to bow their knee and declare that he's Lord. And that is a type of worship of acknowledging his greatness. Mm. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of the judgments of the Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. You that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Why would he sow gladness for us? Because there comes a time when there's going to be a harvest of that gladness. And I'm persuaded as, as the watchmen are starting to sing. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Glory to God. Amen. Let me bless you. <laughs> The Lord bless you, O watchman, and awaken you to sing as he takes unto himself his great power and reigns in this generation. The Lord inspire you and expand your vision of victory. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in as he prepares you for your role in this harvest season. Great grace be upon you and your family. May you live to be 120. Hope you said amen. Let us pray. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, you are so cool. I love the way you declare the end from the beginning. And we just read over it and read over it and don't even catch it till you start turning the lights on. And then all of a sudden, everywhere we look, we see a thread of it throughout the scripture. So praise you, Father. Once again, that you rest in your love over us, that you sing over us, and now you're inviting us to join in the concert. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that it confuses the enemy. Thank you, Lord, that it pulls out from under him all of the foundations that he's built and all of the junk that he has tried to use to destroy and deceive 
and to dismay the people. And it just shatters all of the walls that he's erected to try to keep people separated from your love. They're just collapsing and falling around him. Lord, we praise you because you're worthy. All glory and dominion be unto you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, dear friend, you have an absolutely fabulous day, and I will talk to you later.